Cats Korean Fairy Tales by William Elliot Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Noel Badrian. Prince Sandalwood, the father of Korea. Four little folks lived in the home of Mr. Kim, two girls and two boys. Their names were Peach Blossom and Pearl, Eightfold Strength and Dragon. Dragon was the oldest, a boy. Grandma Kim was very fond of telling them stories about the heroes and fairies of their beautiful country. One evening, when Papa Kim came home from his office in the government buildings, he carried two little books in his hand, which he handed over to Grandma. One was a little almanac, looking in its bright cover of red, green, and blue, as gay as the piles of cakes and confectionery made when people get married, for everyone knows how rich in colours are pastry and sweets for the bride's friends at a Korean wedding party. The second little book contained the direction sent out by the Royal Minister of Ceremonies for the celebration of the festival in honour of the ancestor prince, Old Sandalwood, the father of Korea. Twice a year, in Pingyang City, they made offerings of meat and other food in his honour, but always uncooked. Who was Old Sandalwood? asked Peach Blossom, the older of the little girls. What did he do? asked Yonggi dragon the older boy let me tell you said grandma as they cuddled together round her on the oiled paper carpet over the main flue at the end of the room where it was warmest for it was early in december and the wind was roaring outside now i shall tell you also why the bear is good and the tiger bad said grandma well to begin long long ago before there were any refined people in the land of dawn and no men but rude savages a bear and a tiger met together it was on the southern slope of old whitehead mountain in the forest these wild animals were not satisfied with the kind of human beings already on earth and they wanted better ones they thought that if they could become human they would be able to improve upon the quality so these patriotic beasts the bear and the tiger agreed to go before hananim the great one of heaven and earth and ask him to change at once their form and nature or at least tell them how it could be done but where to find him that was the question so they put their heads down in token of politeness stretched out their paws and waited a long while hoping to get light on the subject then a voice spoke out saying eat a bunch of garlic and stay in a cave for twenty-one days if you do you will become human so into the dark cave they crawled chewed their garlic and went to sleep it was cold and gloomy in the cave and with nothing to hunt or eat the tiger got tired day after day he moped snarled growled and behaved rudely to his companion but the bear bore the tiger's insults finally on the eleventh day the tiger seeing no sign of losing his stripes or of shedding his hair claws or tail and with no prospect of fingers or toes in view concluded to give up trying to become a man he bounded out of the cave and at once went hunting in the woods going back to his old life but the bear patiently sucking her paw waited till the twenty-one days had passed then her hairy hide and claws dropped off like an overcoat her nose and ears suddenly shortened, and she stood upright, a perfect woman. Walking out of the cave, 
the new creature sat beside a brook and in the pure water beheld how lovely she was there she waited to see what would take place next about this time while these things were going on down in the world matters of interest were happening in the skies huan Ung, the son of the great one in the heavens asked his father to give him an earthly kingdom to rule over pleased with this request the lord of heaven decided to present his son with the land of the dragon's back which men called korea now as everybody knows this country of ours the everlasting great land of the day spring rose up on the first morning of creation out of the sea in the form of a dragon his spine loins and tail formed the great range of mountains that makes the backbone of our beautiful country while his head rises skyward in the eternal white mountain in the north on its summit amid the snow and ice lies the blue lake of pure water from which flow out our boundary rivers what is the name of this lake asked yonghi the boy the dragon's pool said grandma kim and during one whole night ever so long ago the dragon breathed hard and long until its breath filled the heavens with clouds this was the way that the great one in the skies prepared the way for his son's coming to earth people thought there was an earthquake but when they woke up in the morning and looked up to the grand mountain so gloriously white they saw the cloud rising far up in the sky as the bright sun shone upon it the cloud turned into pink red yellow and the whole eastern sky looked so lovely that our country then received its name the land of morning radiance down out of this cloud of many colours and borne on the wing huan nung the heavenly prince descended first to the mountain top and then to the lower earth when he entered the great forest he found a beautiful woman sitting by the brookside it was the bear that had been transformed into lovely human shape and nature the heavenly prince was delighted he chose her as his bride and by and by a little baby boy was born the mother made for her son a cradle of soft moss and reared her child in the forest now the people who dwelt at the foot of the mountain were in those days very rude and simple they wore no hats and no white clothes lived in huts and did not know how to warm their houses with flues running under the floors nor had they any books or writing their sacred place was under a sandalwood tree on a small mountain named tabak in pingyang province they had seen the cloud rising from the dragon's pool so rich in colours and as they looked they saw it move southward and nearer to them until it stood over the sacred sandalwood tree when out stepped a white robed being and descending through the air alighted in the forest and on the tree oh how beautiful this spirit looked against the blue sky yet the tree was far away and long was the journey to it let us all go to the sacred tree said the leader of the people so together they hide over hill and valley until they reached the holy ground and ranged themselves in circles about it a lovely sight greeted their eyes there sat under the tree a youth of grand appearance arrayed in princely dress though young looking and rosy in face his countenance was august and majestic despite his youth he was wise and venerable i have come down from my ancestors in heaven to rule over you my children he said looking at them most kindly 
at once the people fell on their knees and all bent reverently shouting thou art our king we acknowledge thee and will loyally obey only thee seeing that they wanted to know what he could tell them he began to instruct them even before he gave them laws and rules and taught them how to improve their houses he told them stories the first one explained to them why it was that the bear is good and the tiger bad the people wondered at his wisdom and henceforth the tiger was hated while people began to like the bear more and more what name shall we give our king so that we may properly address him asked the people of their elders it is right that we should call him after the place in which we saw him under our holy tree let his title therefore be the august and venerable sandalwood so they saluted him thus and he accepted the honour seeing that the people were rough and unkempt prince sandalwood showed them how to tie up and dress their hair he ordained that men should wear their long locks in the form of a topknot boys must braid their hair and let it hang down over their backs no boy could be called a man until he married a wife then he could twist his hair into a knot put on a hat have a headdress like an adult and wear a long white coat as for the women they must plait their tresses and wear them plainly at their neck except at marriage or on great occasions of ceremony then they might pile up their hair like a pagoda and use long hairpins jewels silk and flowers thus our korean civilization was begun and to this day the law of the hat and hair distinguishes us above all people said grandma we still honour the august and venerable prince sandalwood now good night my darlings end of prince sandalwood the father of korea